Good morning. Welcome to Simply Sunday. I'm Pastor Vicki Fink, Interim Pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in New London. And this is my husband, Dave. A happy Father's Day to you all. Glad you've joined in for this simple service of word and prayer. For the Gospel reading today, we will be in the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter. We'll start at verse 24, and we'll also share Psalm 69 with the refrain, Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. And that's what we're claiming this morning, God's love and kindness toward us. We open our hearts and minds to hear God's word and pray together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that, that we do not, not trust your abundance, your abundance and, and we, we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, in the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we will be doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is a responsive reading from Psalm 69. There is a refrain that you can join us in. It's, Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. We will start the reading with the refrain. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, Lord for, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach. And shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred. An alien to my mother's children. Answer, Answer me, me, O Lord, Lord for, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting. But that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Answer, answer me, O Lord, for, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. Here ends the reading.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master the house of Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I'm thinking about the long stretch of green ahead in terms of the summer solstice, and also uh, in terms of the liturgical color about this time that we have now set before us for growing in grace. Last week, we heard about those first 12 disciples, our legacy really, as followers of Jesus. This week, we don't have such an idyllic uh, passage to look at as far as what following Jesus will bring into our lives. We just heard, uh, read, that followers of Jesus will be maligned. Also that uh, it's a sword that Jesus brings, not peace. And then right here on Father's Day, I've come to set a man against his father. Well, context is everything, right? And so especially when listening to the Word of God, we want to know the context to which these sacred texts were written in, and then we want to hold them up next to our own context so that we can begin to listen to God's word for us. In the case of those first hearers, it probably would be reassuring to have been told that the fact that they are being maligned is because their, their teacher, their master, was also maligned. And so in that experience, they are sharing in the ministry of Jesus. And also back then, the head of the household would be the one to determine the faith for everyone in the household. So, of course, if someone began to be a disciple of Jesus, uh, that would be a break from the people most, uh, the people they were the closest to. So hearing that that was to be expected from Jesus would also reassure them that uh, even though they were suffering a great loss, 
this was part of being faithful. That's the same for any of us today who put family values at the center, who, who make uh, it a priority, who uh, have family as the center of our life. Uh, it would be a tremendous loss, but if push came to shove and it was a matter of choosing between uh, following Christ and uh, being in relationship with those we love, uh, we would consider it faithful to take up that cross in order to follow Jesus. In our context, though, these days, uh, it's very rare that the head of the household will uh, turn out a member for any reason. Uh, we're not living in the glory days of Christianity, for sure. But there is an attitude of toleration that prevails. So when we share our faith with others about the worst case scenario is to get a you do you kind of sneer in response to that. Now we live in such a different setting now to live out our faith than those first hearers of the good news in Christ did. Our kind of challenge is a subtle one. Our faith has become institutionalized. And so the danger for us is really to be too comfortable and too complacent. So how might this word of God be speaking to us today? I'm thinking that maybe Jesus is bringing a sword rather than peace. We are experiencing through activists in the street, through the social unrest, that has been ongoing. And the nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered. I'm thinking we're seeing in cell phone videos that are shown over and over again, which make it very difficult to deny the reality of racism. Jesus pointed out to his followers long ago and to us today that God is at work in confounding and perplexing ways, not just in the sweetness and sunshine times, but actually it's God's work to stir up upheaval. And Jesus is saying to us, this is God's way of redemption. This is the way of the cross. The consternation that we heard in the psalm today of shame and reproach of receiving scorn from those who scorn God. In that cry for help, the psalmist recognizes that God is the one who disrupts the status quo, who through upheaval creates cracks wide enough to allow the glory of God to shine on through to us. The truth will out, we are told. That's the promise today. The hairs on our head are counted do not be afraid, we are told, even as all these crises stick up around us. We hear from God's word today that yes, the walls are all crumbling around us, but fear not, hold on to the truth, proclaim it, live it, live for the health of others. Give to those who are in need and listen to those who insist that they have not been heard. Those are the ways for us 
to be followers of Jesus in our time. They are the way for us to take up our cross. It's Father's Day, a day we give thanks to those who provide for others, for those who are mentors and role models. I hope you've had a lot of those people in your lives. We're thankful for them, but none so much, not so much thankfulness as we have for God, the Father of all, who came, who lived among us teaching and healing, who in dying and rising accomplished a great work of salvation and redemption through the cross, through confounding and perplexing upheaval. God is at work among us today as he has been at work among people of faith in all times, unfolding his great kind love for a world in deep need. Amen. Join us in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our time of prayer together today, each petition will conclude, hear us and help us, O God, and then if you would respond, your love is kind. Called into the unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our needy world. 
O God, Father in heaven, hold your church in your loving arms. Protect believers who face persecution for your sake. Bless the work of all those who share their faith in you. Build up your church in this unprecedented time and show us how to follow you faithfully. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your, your love is kind. kind. O oh God, our provider, the summer solstice reminds us of your care for the whole creation. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Feed all your creatures, both animal and human, with the sustenance they need for life. Guide us to the sources of energy that do not destroy the earth you have created. Hear us and help us, O God. Your, your love is kind. kind. O God, our ruler, inspire our president, our governors, and our legislators to work toward justice for all. Lead us to ways of life that are free from racial and ethnic prejudice. Strengthen the world's democracies and sustain those who are working to secure free and safe elections. Give a home to refugees. Form our military and our police to maintain peace and to inhibit violence. Hear us and help us, O God. Your, Your love is kind. God, our physician, bring healing to all who are sick and suffering. Preserve the world from more waves of the coronavirus and guide researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Protect those whose jobs expose them to contagion. Support our healthcare workers. We pray for those on the prayer list and those we name before you now. Hear us and help us, O God. Your, Your love, love is kind. kind. O oh God, our peacemaker, inhabit each household in the land with your powerful peace. Train us to live in together in harmony. Nourish marriages and sustain extended families. Protect children from harm of every kind. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your, your love, love is kind. kind. O oh God, our source of life, bless all fathers and father figures as they face both longstanding and emerging family needs. Comfort those who long to be fathers and those for whom this day is difficult. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your, Your love, love is kind. kind. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to
to all generations. O Lord, Almighty God, Father unchanging, upright and holy, for by your hand we have been fed. Spirit, we have been led. Oh Lord, you have been good, you have been faithful to all generations. That brings another service of Simply Sunday to a conclusion. I want to remind you that this week on Wednesday evening there is another free grab-and-go meal uh, which will be distributed at church between 5 and 6 p.m. to those in need. And also then on Thursday we have the debut of a carport clutch. We're trying at 9 a.m. Uh, bring your own chair. We'll meet under the portico at church. Uh, in the fresh air, with masks, uh, physically distant, sing, but having a way to catch up in person. And also, uh, please go to our virtual home. Uh, there's lots of resources there for your support and might be of interest to you at trinitynewlondon.com. Hope you have a great week and receive this sending blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you now and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen.